Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Clay Ramage. If you're new to our channel, welcome and uh, so hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We are back with another Goodwill Bins haul today. My wife and I went this morning and found some great stuff. Um, so let's just get right into it. Lots of bubble wrap. It was bubble wrap day and uh, for you wondering why are you picking up bubble wrap because um number one it's super lights and you pay by the pound at the goodwill outlet bins so i pay very little money for the bubble wrap it's expensive to buy at the store so i pick it up and besides it gets recycled this way and reused and repurposed and all that good stuff without ending up in the landfill anywhere so and it's clean there's some of it that's you know can be dirty and yucky and i don't pick that up but the Clean stuff that's easily used. Um, and yeah, it just saves me a lot of money by doing that. And then uh, picked up a lot of these smaller bags. These we use down at the Pink Elephant, which is the antique store in downtown Hopkins, Minnesota, where I have a booth. And so I picked these up, and we're always needing bags down there. So when I find them in the bins, I pick them up and use them for that. So there you go. Um, I found these was actually, this is a molded foam for a uh, Swarovski crystal figurine. That was long gone, but I got the foam for shipping material because it's for something I have that's, you know, pretty breakable. I can easily, you know, cut out some of this, to fit it in there so it's nice and secure when I ship it. So again, you know, if I paid 15 cents for it, but it helps protect the stuff I'm shipping. So that's how I look at it. It's a matter of economics for me. <laughs> I want to save money, but still get things shipped um, safely. So I am creative in my packaging. And like I say, it helps to uh, recycle and uh, reuse it. Another thing we found were some vintage cards. These are some vintage postcards, a um, little stack of them. I was looking to see if there's a date on here. Doesn't they're Hallmark? Um, these are vintage Christmas ones. It says may happiness decorate your holidays. Ah, those are pretty cool. So there's some of those. Oh, I should show you this before I cover it with stuff. I picked up this little funky shelving unit. Um, it's made out of walnut. I think it was a homemade piece. It doesn't look like a manufactured piece. Um, but I can use this down at display down at the Pink Elephant to put more stuff in in a smaller space. Add layers, if you will, to the displays. So that was good. That was probably the, one of the heavier items that we bought today. Um, so I probably paid 4 to $5 for it. Found a vintage uh, Peanuts card. This one does have a signature in it. Um, but it's... Dated 19, copyrights of 1952 and 1958. So this is a pretty old card, but it's in great shape. It's got his name on the bottom. So somebody could easily just frame this or, you know, use it for a Christmas decoration. Um, found some more vintage cards that are still in this package. These are vintage Christmas cards um, with the envelopes, some of them. Oh. There's lots of different paperwork in here. Paralyzed Veterans of America. Oh, here's memories. Some of you may remember what these are. The younger people will be like, I have no clue what those are. These are punch cards. These are the old programming punch cards that we used to have to put in for the computers to read to know the information. So, <laughs> I, I I used to have to use these, program those kind of things. I remember those. And hope you don't ever drop them, because then your program shot, because you got to put them back in the right order. Um, so yeah, some more vintage Christmas cards. Oh, there's a nice vintage-looking card. And these are always collectible. Um, I really like that scene. Oh, there's another... nostalgic feeling cards so yeah so there's those and then found a whole stack of these larger ones the christmas tree with matching envelopes ha ha 
That's pretty exciting. Um, and then we found some more modern Christmas cards, but my wife found some holiday bags. Again, we picked these up. These are expensive when you buy them at the store because these are like a dollar fifty for the paper ones. And these were two dollars each, originally marked three forty nine. So three dollars and fifty cents per bag, whereas we probably paid, you know, dollar dollar fifty for all of them. So hey, can't beat that. Um, picked up a number of items for the backpacks. We put ponchos in the backpacks, especially for the spring and summertime. So we this happens to be a bigger one than we normally get, but there's one of those. We also put in water bottles, found a couple of those. This one's still brand new with the tags on it. And we put those in the backpacks for the homeless. Um, for use, for those of you who aren't familiar, when I say backpacks, what we mean, the, we do backpacks for that we hand out to homeless people as we're driving around and see them. So these are just, we have a list of stuff and you can check out our backpack how-to video that I have um, as well. This, vintage doll it's a leather body um with cloth legs porcelain arms although this arm is broken and porcelain head this this is a simon and halbig um doll um made in germany that's what it says on the head she's not in the best of shape she's got a broken eyeball so it's a little creepy it's still in there it's just not fixed to its proper location so that can be fixed and it does have the hair and stuff I don't I haven't looked her up other than I know that this Simon and Halbig is highly collectible um so I don't know what model this is but you know she's not in perfect condition but oops she's losing her head oh and there's stuff stuffed up in her head speaking of losing her head um 1080 S and H seven. So I have to look her up, but she's one of the larger dolls. Um, so that's, that's a good thing. The larger the dolls, the more expensive they are, in particular for this particular company. So, and I knew she wasn't in the best of shape, so she's not going to command the hundreds of dollars that some of those do. Um, but even the head, which is in great condition outside of her eye, um, you know, can sell for 50 to a hundred dollars for the head alone. So, Thought with the body and everything, I should do pretty well. I'll probably price her under $100, but I'm looking for more things I can throw on eBay. So, um, speaking of throwing things on eBay, I found this electric percolator coffee pot. Did not find the cord. Very disappointed in not being able to find the cord. I did, the lid was separated, but I did find the lid. And it does have the have the grind holder and the lid for the grinds um but what it didn't have was the stem which i was disappointed in that too that we didn't find any of that stuff so we will uh have to continue either looking for parts or selling it as is it's actually in beautiful condition you know the finish this is a chrome finish it's very shiny very bright not dinged up just a tiny bit of scratches on it. It's got these beautiful little bake light handles. Um, and I love the little spigot on the front. So, and this is a, um, why can I not think of the name of it? Now I have to look it up. Manning Bowman um, Percolator, which I just sold a similar one. This particular one dates from the 1920s. I did um, sell one that dated from 1904 last month um so so yeah these should do well and because it's electronic even though i didn't have the cord 99 cents that's the best deal about this otherwise i wouldn't have picked it up if i would have had to pay by the pound with missing parts this way i don't have to worry about the missing parts so much when it's only 99 cents i'll do that all right so here let me get through some of these my wife wanted some red pins she uses them for marking stuff travel toothbrush again backpacks for the homeless razors 
Um, and socks. These are happen to be leggings. We do uh, winter hats and gloves. Um, small blankets we put in there. Another hat. And then, oh, here's the blades for the razor. So all of this is our backpack supply. So we'll put those back in there. And my wife found a shirt for herself. At the bins, brand new, still has the tags on it. Um, it's a Bill Blass um, sweater. So, and it says it's extra, extra large, but it is not extra, extra large. And my, my wife is very small. So um, it's obviously was mismarked and that's probably why it ended up being donated because people are looking at the size and that wasn't the right size. But anyway, all right, there, that's that bucket out of the way. Now we can move to the next bucket. So all total today we spent $35. Probably like I say $5 on that little shelf. The doll, she's rather heavy too. So I probably paid about $4 for the doll. So with the doll alone, you know, we more than double our money on what we've gotten so far. And this is a Hubco <laughs> geological sample bags. And at first I was like, this is kind of interesting thing to find at the bins. And when you look at it, it looks like kind of a vintage box. Um, but actually it isn't. They still sell these particular things. Um, and this box has been opened, so I don't know that there's a hundred in here, but it's still very full. So I'm trying to decide if I want to pull them all out, count them or just sell it as is, you know, for a cheaper rate. But these new new boxes are like on eBay sell for $50 with a hundred of them in there. So even if I get 25 out of these, I'm doing well. And there's not very many listed. So that's always a good sign when there's not too many because then you're one of the few people that has them when people need them. Good way to run eBay. Feather tree, feather Christmas tree. This is actually an ornament size, smaller. But we have people come in the antique store looking for feather trees. So I picked that up. This will go in next year's Christmas bin. Um, picked up this little trivet stand because up here I have a Fenton tr um, plate, trivet plate, the large one. I believe it's the 13 and a half inch. Um, that when I bought it, it didn't have the handle. Now, this is a gold tone one. I was really open for silver, but gold works as well because it's a white um, silver crest plate. So, found that by itself in the bin. So, that was good because I've been looking for one and hadn't found one. So, that'll help complete that project because that plate, you know, as a trivet plate is worth $75, $80. So, I've been wanting to get it going and now I can because I finally found the parts. Patience is part of the name of the game um, in this reselling stuff when you have pieces and it just started snowing. Sweet! They were calling for snow to start around noon. It's now quarter after two. So they were close. Oh, sorry, I got distracted. Um, little vintage frame, swivel frame. This is a small like three and a half by five size um but i thought it was you know i've done well with swivel flame flames frames so i thought i'll give that a try um we found some more cards again cards are expensive nowadays so um when we can find them at the bins we pick them up oh here's one more this one i picked up of course it's got the car motif on it they're blank cards, so you can use them for any occasion. So, so yeah. So this is how we do our budget shopping. Scotty Dog. Everybody loves Scotty Dogs. Um, this is a, there should have been a set, but there's only one. Um, it's a wooden bookend. These actually were made in Japan, um, but they're wooden. And he's got a little damage to his tail, but that's not a big deal. He's a little dusty. I'll clean him up. Um, 
So yeah, I'll put him down at the pink elephant for probably, you know, six, seven dollars. Um, my wife got some more magnetic letters for our daughter, I believe. She was looking for some, so we were picking those up. I've Oh yeah, I got stuff inside the wooden box. Found a wooden recipe box. I love the hinges on this. Aren't those great? They're not your usual hinges. They swing back out of the way. Um, found some little jewelry pieces. That's what's in here. A little pen jewelry pendant. Uh, metal barrette. Gold chain. Uh, another necklace of a mermaid. A bangle metal bracelet and then a beaded bracelet nothing nothing exciting but just some nice little things to help build up my little stockpile i found this little guy this little globe it's a glass globe on a metal stand though he's very loose oh i need just need to tighten this there's a screw just need to tighten the screw and he'll be good to go but yeah globes are very popular people love globes and uh, I thought that's a great size for anybody's house you don't need a big shelving unit to put your globe on which I have one back behind there anyway found these wonderful brass candlestick holders there's a set of them which I was excited to find two of them found one and then found the other one but the exciting thing is they're adjustable so depending upon the height of the candle that you want or as it's burning down and you want to keep it at the same height you can push it up or however you want to do it and then you just tighten a little knob so these will polish up really nicely um i'm assuming they're made in india they're not marked the labels are gone um but because there's a pair, means they're worth more as a pair than individually. Um, nice vintage pair, too. So I'll clean them up. They got wax all over them, but I'll clean them up and shine them up a little bit. And throw those out on eBay. Oh, there's another poncho for the backpacks. Um, my wife found these foam pad sleeves. She's decided she wanted to try them because her elbows are getting... A little worn when she's working on the desk. I found these little vintage porcelain knobs. Um, again, these I'll put down at the pink elephant as a little lot. We do. People are coming looking for vintage hardware. Um, oh yeah, sorry, that was a pack of Kleenex for the homeless. Backpacks. Dental floss for the backpacks. Oh, I found a bunch of these. Um, these are your you know, the clip-on candle tree holders. But these are a pine cone on the bottom. I haven't seen that before. I've seen a number of these, but not a pine cone on the bottom, which I thought was pretty cool. So there's a whole bag full of those. Ooh, something else in here. Discovery time! Oh. It's just a wooden bead. I don't know what that's... Must have fell off or something. Okay, oh, here's another glass knob handle. That one's in green. All right, so this is the funny one. My wife found this box. Beautiful musical graphics. Jingle Bell Rock, it says on there. And then on the top, a little dog playing. Or should, I think it's a reindeer. Can't tell with that $3 sticker on there. Going off fairly well. There we go. All right. It's old enough. Somebody must have tried to sell it at a garage sale. Anyway, so yes, it's a reindeer. Jingle Bell Rock. So you're like, oh, what fun will we find in the box? It's a rock with a bell on it. Jingle Bell Rock. Um, and actually, I think it had two bells on originally because there's some glue residue there. But here's the cool part. When you read about it, they included this little 
pamphlet, the original Jingle Bell Rock. It'll rock, it'll rock, it'll roll, and put a jingle in your soul. But on the back it says, assembled and packaged in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by people who are disabled. So this is one of those employment opportunities for disabled people. Again, this was probably from the 70s that this was done, just based on the 70s, early 80s, just based on the graphics and the style. Um, printed in Hong Kong. It does have the barcode, so you know it's after 1974. Um, but, <laughs> and there's a name on the front. I'm assuming that's the person that designed the uh, top of it. But that what I thought was hilarious. Found a brass cat. That'll be fun. Brass is kind of in right now. Oh, I picked up. There were a couple lampshades in there. Still had the harps on them. So I grabbed the finials off the harps. And the reason I do that is because I lot up the finials. And I sell those for $15 to $20 for a lot of 7 to 10 of them. I do really well. And especially if they're a mix of different styles. Found a little owl pendant. Um, found a silver dish. And this one is from the Nicolette Hotel. Now, usually these kind of silver dishes I wouldn't pick up. But any that are related to hotels, um, restaurants, I do tend to pick up because they become more collectible. Uh, this is an eight and a half inch bowl you know so they would have used it to serve stuff in or set on the tray but more likely it was used in their kitchen area so that was kind of a cool find and nicolette hotel is a local one here in minnesota so here's uh some crystals I, again i put those in a large lot we found some miniatures look at this itty bitty kitty he's marked made in japan So it's very little with the little yellow ball. Reminds me of the um, Royal Copley kitty with the yellow ball, ball of yarn that is so very popular out there. Um, whoops, sorry, I'm knocking everything off the table. And there's also this old woman figurine holding a broom. She must love sweeping, that she's holding her broom so closely. Found these nippers. These are made in Germany. Um, Haver Lockhart. So, they're almost like finger, you can nip off somebody's finger. But I assume they are for trimming dogs' nails or cats' nails. Found this beautiful silver plated spoon, sugar spoon. And it's got the flower on the back as well. And this one is. Oh my, my eyesight is not letting me read this. It's not your typical manufacturer and that's why I grabbed it. I'm gonna have to look with the loop because I can't read the writing on there. But anyway, most exciting find. You get to stay all the way to the end to the most exciting find to me. Is this, what I would say at this point is an antique shoe um, form. It's has the label. It's really hard to read. I'm going to spend some time trying to um, figure out exactly what it says, but it does say is something standard is the company made in Philadelphia, USA. It says patented. And I can't, unfortunately, read the rest very well. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's still got that paper label on there. And then um, it's a little rusty, but I was amazed to find it. And it it's stuck because it's so rusty, but that's okay. These are very collectible. Um, so, and it's a woman's shoe, look how thin it is. So you can imagine those really thin Victorian black boots with the lace up, you know, something like this. For that so anyway 
that's what we got. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a great day and we'll enjoy the snow. We'll catch you next time. Bye.